This afternoon, there's going to be an official unveiling of a life-size portrait of a sperm whale. And we wanted to know why, because this is an interesting portrait. So we brought in our next guest, University of Hartford professor Dr. Catherine Owens, a professor in environmental policy, amongst many other things. But that's the most relevant one right here. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having I'm me. I'm sorry I say Catherine. You prefer cat, I yeah. should say. So I, I, <laughs> forgive me for that. Uh, first things first. Okay. What is this sculpture? Where specifically on the University of Hartford campus is it? And why is it there? So it's a life-size portrait of a sperm whale, as you yeah. said. So that means it's 60 feet wide and wow. 20 feet tall, and it's going to be in the Harrison Libraries at the University of Hartford. We hung it um, on Monday, and mm -hmm. it will be there at least through the end of the calendar year. And it's there because I study plastic pollution, okay. and I think it's really important that we understand what kind of plastic surrounds us every day, um, because it's really everywhere, and it's so hard to avoid. Yes, and I, I'm assuming you're going with a sperm whale to give a life-size idea of just how much plastic there is out there. Yeah, it's part of a series of portraits of uh, 46 animals that are mm -hmm. all life-size, and they're all animals that are harmed by plastic pollution. Right. And I, I just want people to kind of connect the things they're doing in their everyday lives with these animals that are harmed. Um, by the work, um, by the plastic. And then um, anything that's over 20 feet, I do as a public project. So okay. I sewed it with kids and adults um, from all over the state of Connecticut over was, the last year. I was gonna say, what, where did the genesis for this come from? And t talk, me, talk to me about the process yeah. of making all these. Yeah, so I actually am a researcher and I usually am out in the field collecting plastic debris, but what happened during the pandemic is all of that was canceled, right? Yeah. Everybody knows what that feels like. Mm -hmm. And so in response, I'm also an artist, I started thinking about the problem of plastic pollution and how we communicate big ideas. And more so than a scientific paper, I think sometimes an art you know, project, something you can see, yes. connects with you so much more right. than a boring, dry uh, scientific research article. <laughs> right. <you know? laughs> Unfortunately, emotion persuades much better than facts do. Yeah. You need a little bit of both, but I, I understand that. Uh, short of just asking what kind of emotions you're hoping to generate mm -hmm. with this, what are some of the maybe the two or three biggest takeaways mm -hmm. you want people to know about plastic pollution mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. that you've gotten their attention? Yeah, well, a lot of that film plastic, even if it's marked with the chasing arrows, mm -hmm. is not actually recyclable, and it's not recyclable in your blue bin, you know, in your at your home. Why, wait, that's a, a bit a, a sham. <laughs> I mean, maybe that's it, too simple, but... It's a, maybe that's a simplification, but what we know is that 95% of plastic packaging globally is not recycled, and 90.5% okay. of all plastic ever made has never been recycled. Now, is there a difference between ha having been recycled or just being recyclable? I mean, is a lot of this recyclable and people are just being lazy about no, it? No, it's not. I don't think it's about necessarily, um, it's complicated. It's right, not necessarily right. just about people. It also has to do with international markets mm -hmm. and the trading of plastic debris that's recyclable um, through this thing called the National Sword Policy. China stopped accepting a lot of our plastic waste a few years ago. Okay. And that was the main place we were sending it. But I also think like we should have a solution ourselves Probably, you know, in yeah. our own country for dealing with it. <laughs> so it's sort of about like making those connections, helping people make those connections. And when people come and see the whale, it's interesting, especially yeah. with kids, because they'll start noticing and recognizing things. They'll say like, oh, that's my cat food, or my sister ah. eats those potato chips, right? And so for me, I, I love that um, that people are associating it um, with the things that are a part of their everyday right. lives. Hey, that was going to be my last quick question. <laughs> what can you do on a household level to try to solve this problem? Well, I don't know if you've tried to use less plastic, but it's mm. very difficult. And I don't know how you do it without unlimited money or time. Understand. So I think we have to like contact the people who make things and say, hey, I love your potato chips, but could you put them in some other kind of packaging? Because um, recycling is not the only answer. And I understand this is complicated. I'm sorry yes. I was asking such no. basic questions. I know so little about it. So yeah. thank you for taking the time to yeah. not just answer these questions, but to let people know about this product uh, project. Again, you can see it right there at the library at the University of Hartford. Doctor, Yay. thank you for taking the time to join us Thanks today. Thanks for having me. We do appreciate it.